So how this whole thing started really was um, not intentional. And your book talks about um, Alfred Binet and Theodore Simon. These were two um, researchers who the government of Paris actually hired to come in and try and find a way to distinguish those children who were having trouble learning. And the book makes it sound like they were actually measuring intelligence. And this is not the case at all. That's erroneous. What these two researchers were hired to do was because during this period um, in the 40s and, and uh, 30s and 40s, there was an influx of immigrants from different um, countries, different continents even, into Paris and, of course, America, uh, into Europe. And what they were trying to do was to help these children who were at a disadvantage because of cultural and language issues. They didn't speak French. So they were coming into grade school and weren't able to keep up because of language problems. So that was putting them in a situation where they weren't able to learn as well as the other students. So what the government decided to do was to then um, hire these two researchers to come up with a way to find a measure that could identify those children who would benefit from uh, remedial training to get them up to par with the other uh, native speakers or people who were used to going to school. The other thing about this is children weren't going to school until this time. Uh, up to this point, children were working in factories for slave labor prices, right? Now it became mandatory for all children to go to school. And those who had already been there, the upper class, of course, had the benefit of previous learning or previous uh, schooling. Other children who had been working in factories um, were now coming in and they didn't know anything about the school system, so they were at a disadvantage. So what they tried to do was come up with a test or a measure of tests that would identify those children who the teacher could then help to bring them up to par with the other children. It wasn't meant to be a test of intelligence. So what Simon and Binet, or Binet and Simon, um, actually did was had a mental age. And the mental age was if you're nine years old and you can perform a task that a typical nine-year-old could perform, then your mental age was nine, right? If you were six years old and you were performing a task that a nine-year-old could do, your mental age was nine. So again, it's all about what kind of age-appropriate task you could um, perform successfully. And they come up with these tasks using their own children um, and seeing what a nine-year-old could do, what a five-year-old could do, what a ten-year-old could do, and then they would categorize them based on age. So again, the task that you were capable of doing would be your mental age. And that was all this to it. What happened later was this guy, Terman, at Stanford University took the uh, Binet scale and he decided to turn it into a ratio. And by turning it into a ratio, he developed what they call the intelligence quotient. And a quotient, of course, is a ratio of now mental age relative to your chronological age times 100. And this would standardize it and make the average 100. The average has to be 100 because if you have a proportion or a ratio here, um, it can't be any higher than, than uh, usually one if it's going to be, if your mental age is 10 and your chronolo chronological age is 10, then it's going to be one, right? So times 100 would be 100. So the average would be 100, meaning that you're performing at the level of your chronological age, meaning your age in years, and your mental age are the same thing. So the average here would be 100, okay? The problem with this quotient now is he starts to think about IQ, because you have this mental age versus chronological age. People who are performing higher than their years are going to have a higher than 100 IQ. So if my mental age was, let's say, 10, and my chronological age was 7, then my IQ is going to be much higher than 100, right? So this whole idea then became a measure that you could now um, you know, evaluate people 100 below or 100 above where you were relative to that norm or that average. They then, um, he then took this kind of idea to the government and um, it was absolutely abused uh, during the 40s and 50s. What they were doing was now basing people who were coming into um, the states, so into uh, you know, America, um, you had to pass and have a certain IQ, otherwise you weren't um, admitted into uh, immigration procedures. So you had to have a certain IQ to come into the country. Um, 
People were eliminated from the military based on their IQ. It even went so far as they decided um, that they weren't going to allow people who had under a certain IQ to be able to have children. So this actually was getting, you know, too far. It was actually bordering on, you know, um, just eugenics even, right? So the government, of course, realized this was going too far. Terman was going too far. People were getting very upset about these kinds of uh, regulations and how they were using the IQ test. So it eventually was banned from those kinds of, of procedures. But we still use it today sometimes for... Um, you know, stereotyping or slotting people into certain levels, um, albeit we do it in a different way, you take an IQ test. <laughs> and the IQ test is going to then, um, you know, show somebody uh, where you're at relative to everybody else, and it can be used in certain situations where, of course, you, are, you have to show it is an important um, assessment in order to be able to use it. So that's how this all, whole thing came about. So this is how it works. So here's the mental age, and that's, of course, MA. Your chronological age is how old you are in years. So the quotient is your MA over your CA times 100. So if you're six years old and you are performing at your, at least, no matter what age you are, if these two are equal, your IQ is going to be 100. It has to be because the proportion, the ratio, ends up being 1. If you're six years old, however, and your chronological age, sorry, if your mental age is six years and you're nine years old, then, of course, you are going to be showing much lower than 100. You'll have an IQ of 67 because you're nine years old, but you're only performing, performing tasks that a six-year-old could do. So you're well <coughs> below the norm here. Um, here you have just the, uh, a little bit more, nine years old, uh, sorry, nine years mentally, 12 years old, and again, the IQ would be 75. Here you've got the opposite. You have a nine-year-old who's performing tasks that a 12-year-old can do. So this works out to be an IQ of 133. And we typically, in psychology, not typically, we do, um, use 130 as the cutoff for giftedness. So a person who scored 133 would be qualified as being gifted, right? So this can have serious impact on how children are um, put into different um, categories based on their IQ.